Welcome to today's program and thank you for joining us. I am C. Virginia Fields, former Manhattan Borough President and current President and CEO of the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS Incorporated. Mission of the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS, also known as in Blacka, is to educate, mobilize, and empower black leaders to meet the challenge of fighting HIV AIDS and other health disparities in their local communities. Amita Care Incorporated is a not-for-profit health plan that specializes in providing comprehensive health coverage and coordinated care to New Yorkers with chronic conditions, including HIV and behavior health disorders, and people who are homeless, or of transgender experience, regardless of HIV status. Amidacare has a wide network of healthcare providers in the five boroughs of New York City, and it's the largest Medicaid special needs health plan in New York State. And for more information, visit or call 188, I'm sorry, 188. Five, five, go Amita. I'm delighted that on today's program that we will speak with staff from Amita Care as a nonprofit organization. They plan and they provide for comprehensive health coverage, coordinated care to New York City Medicaid members. And we will also talk about our upcoming partnership between Amita Care and Inblaca for National African American Hepatitis C Action Day. And here to discuss these topics are Terry D. Leash. And Terry Leash is a managed care pharmacy executive with over 20 years of experience working in a variety of settings, including specialty pharmacy, Medicaid managed care, Medicaid Part D, commercial insurance, pharmaceutical advertising, and communication. He is currently Vice President of Pharmacy at Amidacare, and Dr. Leach oversees all clinical and operational pharmacy services and a treatment adherence team of outreach workers. He has represented Amidacare on several clinical committees including the New York State Summit on HCV Elimination Work Group and HSS Expert Consultation Group on the evidence for early HCV treatment in the United States. We're also joined by Ellie Fatahi. And Ellie Fatahi received her pharmacy D from Rutgers University she is currently the Director of Clinical Pharmacy at Amidacare. And at Amidacare, her responsibilities include formulary management, PBM oversight, and clinical program development and implementation. And our third guest, Danielle Cornwall, currently is the Hep C Coordinator uh, Pharmacy Specialist at Amidacare. And her responsibilities include Hep C, program coordination and implementation. Danielle began her pharmacy career in retail and has worked at Walgreens. What an interesting background, retail, Walgreens, Amidacare. It all comes together. First of all, let me say thanks to each one of you uh, for joining me and I, I, I so admire the work uh, that uh, takes place at Amidacare. So to get us started, perhaps, uh, Dr. Leach, you could just tell us a little about Amidacare itself in okay. terms of the organization and some of the work that you do. Great. Well, thank you very much for having us. It's a very pleasure to be here. And um, I think you did a great job of explaining exactly who Amidacare is in your introduction. I think uh, we're talking a little bit more about Hep C today. 
So uh, we brought the pharmacy team who does hepatitis C and kind of to explain what our roles are in uh, hepatitis. We're a little different than most insurance companies because we, uh, we have a pharmacy department and we don't dispense, but we actually work with our members to make sure that they have access to the medications they need. And we make sure that those medications are, are the right medication for that individual and that they have the services and things they need to be successful in those treatments. So um, I guess from the team here, I guess myself as the administrator of the pharmacy program, um, Ellie uh, does the clinical program um, pro components, and Danielle works with our, our members or our patients to really make sure that they're having the right experience as they go through their hepatitis C treatment. So Can you just tell us a little about um, how many patients or hep C patients do you see, say on a quarterly, annually, or however you measure that basis, any? What's thoughts about that? It's, I guess, to start, I guess fr from a historical perspective, uh -huh. I know we've treated over a thousand individuals uh -huh. out of our um, membership uh, have successfully uh, received H uh, hepatitis C treatment. So I don't know, I haven't, uh, what our latest, how many have we been treating recently? Um, you know? Our latest yeah. so far this year, we've treated about 150 members, mm -hmm. or, and currently are in treatment is about 150 members. And is that increasing now since uh, the treatment is less toxic, onerous, difficult uh, than it had been in the past? Because as we were ch uh, chatting earlier, we know that uh, many persons who were uh, living with hepatitis C, either discontinued treatment mm -hmm. <coughs> because they were not able to tolerate it, and now with only, what is it, six or eight weeks of treatment, one can become cured, and it is much less uh, toxic and it's much more tolerable. Or have you seen an increase in terms of number of patients as a result of these important changes? So, yes, treatment is more effective. Mm -hmm less toxic, um, and it can be a minimum of eight weeks of treatment. Um, there's six different types of hepatitis C, so a lot of people don't realize that. Um, and the type of hepatitis C that you have, uh, the history of your treatment, so depending on how you've been treated, whether you've been treated in the past, and with what drug you've been treated with, and the amount of liver damage can determine the duration of treatment. So it's really exciting because now we're at a time where it can be um, once a day, um, orally, so we don't have to take injections anymore, um, and treatment can be as low as eight weeks depending on uh, your history. Um, so yes, it's, it's a really exciting time in um, the hep C world, or actually the infectious disease world, because this is the first time that we have a virus that you can treat and cure. Uh um, one thing I do want to stress is that hepatitis C treatment is not a vaccine. Um, so we need to remind individuals that yes, it's a cure, but you can get reinfected. And so one of the things that we're trying to stress is an awareness around the fact that um, there's a treatment available, go get treated, but also please be aware that there is a chance of reinfection and w we are limited in the number of drugs available and um, how you get treated is determined on based on how you've been previously treated. Uh, and that's a much better story than we saw like, you know, four and five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, treatment used to be an injection you took several times a week and you took the injections for six months to 12 months and the side effects were really bad. So the new treatment is successful. We now have a cure, uh, it's, a, it's excellent. So. Just talk a little about how um, hepatitis C is contracted because we, we hear a lot of different stories and now with tattoos uh, being very uh, popular. We're hearing more around the country as uh, in Black uh, conducts its work. A lot of talk about that. So just tell us, talk a little briefly about what is hepatitis C and how does one become, possibly can become infected? So it's a bloodborne in disease, mm -hmm. it's a virus. Um, and it's a virus that you can acquire without feeling any symptoms. So it can take decades before you, you uh, feel the symptoms of hepatitis C. Um, hepatitis C is a liver disease, so it can lead to damage in the liver. So one thing that you'll hear is liver cirrhosis, and that basically means that there's significant liver damage. Um, so that's why treatment, um, I'm sorry, that's why uh, getting checked um, and diagnosed early is so important 
because then you can uh, avoid liver damage down the line. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a, a blood-borne uh, uh, virus, and so um, IV drug abuse um, is uh, the number one risk factor for hepati developing hepatitis C or acquiring hepatitis C. And that could be at some point in your lifetime as well. Do, do, you don't have to be an active uh, drug abuser right now for that to, to occur. The highest risk population right now is actually the baby boomers. So if you're between the ages of 45 and 65, um, that's the highest risk population because there are lots of things, whether it be um, blood products, um, tattoos, some people mm -hmm. mentioned, I think the tattoo situation in New York, there's now controls in place that kind of prevent, you have to have a sterile environment to do tattoos uh, in an actual certified tattoo parlor. And that doesn't cover the things if people are getting tattoos on their own or at home or something like that. But, um, but those are the primary ways you can get. There is uh, slight risk for men who have sex with men, but uh, the sexual risk is not as much it is, as it is if there's a, any history of IV drug abuse. And demographically, it is still African Americans who are predominantly impacted with hepatitis C? Well, I think they're twice as likely twice to be impacted as likely. Uh -huh. than a white population. Yes. Right. Yeah. And the, uh, I was understand that the death rate among uh, African Americans due to hepatitis C is even higher than HIV. Correct, correct. But we're also seeing the intersectionality between HIV and hepatitis C, which makes it a little bit more difficult time. Right. Well, they're, they're both, both diseases are kind of transmitted the same ways. Right. So you sometimes you see hepatitis C in an HIV population right. or vice versa. Okay. So, yeah. Now, dealing, Danielle, on the uh, Medicaid side of the pharmaceutical side, I suppose, tell us a little about your work in this area and what are you seeing? Well, my main focus is to make sure that our members are prepared to get treated and that we support them in getting treatment. Um, we do have a team of nurses who are care coordinators. We consider them ICT, integrated care teams. Um, we have nurse, pharmacy department, and we also have case managers who assist us with making sure that members are prepared to begin treatment and support them throughout their treatment as well to make sure that they actually get cured from the treatment. So you said getting prepared to get treatment. Is that a long protracted process or now that you have information, uh, now that we've seen, you know, the effectiveness of treatment and the, it's more tolerable, is that a long, difficult task? Um, definitely not. I mean, mm -hmm. since our population is primarily HIV infected mm -hmm. and then they would be co-infected with hep C, we want to make sure that we're targeting the HIV first and making sure that they're suppressed. So as long as they're suppressed, HIV suppressed, then they would be ready for treatment. And typically when we're preparing them for hep C treatment, it's us making sure that their HIV is under control. So it, it depends on the member. As long as they're adherent to their HIV medication, it could take less than a month for them to be ready to be treated. And it, you made an interesting comment. You said that uh, certain of the patients you're working with are persons who are living with HIV and or AIDS and uh, now hepatitis C. And I think that leads me to um, the work that in Black is doing and why we did it. And that is uh, establishing six years ago, <coughs> pardon me, the African American Hepatitis C Action Day. Because as we know, nationally, Hepatitis Month is May, A, B, and C. But because of the impact within the African American community, and a person might not be living with HIV, but they do have Hepatitis C, but they don't know it, they're not getting tested. So a great deal of this has to do with the education and awareness so we can capture that population of individuals who are living with hepatitis C but not HIV. And I think that is hopefully going to add to your numbers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look forward to doing that. And I know that we're going to be engaging here in New York City uh, with Medicare, uh, which is going to be um, Hepatitis Action Day is July 25th. And on that day, we typically around the country uh, will do press statements, have summits do testing and since uh in black uh, initiated this six years ago now we have participation from 
organizations, at least three states, I'm sorry, 36 states around the country. So it shows that interest is growing and what you do is so important. Now tell us a little bit about the cost of medication and how is that paid for? So um, when the drugs first came out, the new products, they were very expensive, um, upwards of $100,000 a treatment. Um, in the past three or four years, as comp competing products have become available, the costs have come down significantly. Um, the price of hepatitis C is still expensive. It's around, um, for eight weeks, somewhere around $30,000, $35,000. But um, New York really has a huge focus on ending um, hepatitis C, as the focus on ending the epidemic for AIDS, but also for hepatitis C as well. So um, in New York City, there should, access is not an issue. Um, if every individual um, should go and ask their provider about getting tested and receiving treatment because um, treatment is available in New York. Um, everybody um, should be able to get health insurance and um, insurance does cover hepatitis C under Medicaid. Because, you know, again, around the country as we move in, in, in and I like to say this, especially in New York, because we're in New York, mm -hmm. we make assumptions that uh, <coughs> in other states, things are accessible, even though we know they're not, especially in those states where Medicaid has not been expanded, right? Mm -hmm. But there is such limited knowledge and information and there's certainly no uh, information in terms of having the ability to have this treatment paid for. Now, would that be the same, or do you know, I think you said eight weeks run roughly thirty to $35,000. Uh, would that be the same in other states, or it varies, or is this just New York as we know so it? The price that I gave is the list price, okay. um, so that that wouldn't change. For this, for the particular drug that I'm referencing, um, that would be the same. That would be the same. So how do we get more people to get tested? Well, I think having your testing day is a, is a great way to start, because I think everybody should know their status. So everybody should know their, their hepatitis C status. So it doesn't matter who you are, but especially those individuals that are 45 to 65. Uh, we're also seeing a, a newer trend where we're seeing uh, some spikes in the young adult population, which tends to go with the uh, you know opioid injectable opioid abuse uh, situation. So, um, but primarily those 45 to 65, but also the you know, younger population. But I think everybody should know their. I was wondering status. about the opioid population in terms of what we're seeing there, uh, as as it relates to hepatitis C, mm -hmm. and so that is an, another major factor in all of this. Correct. Because a lot of times the way, they ad, uh, way that opioids can be abused mm -hmm. is through injection. So sometimes with that injection, you're you know, opening up your bloodstream to infection, which could be hepatitis C. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like we still have a lot of work to do. Yes. Uh, that uh, the fact that hepatitis C is curable, good thing. Mm -hmm. And we have to continue to get that message out there. Uh, the good news here in New York State, as you said, as we work on ending the epidemic, we also now include an end in hepatitis C. And I think we have certainly a good opportunity because it's curable and there are treatments, there is a, a, a vaccine. But far too many people still don't know it. So again, that's why we will continue to do uh, African American Action Day, and the date for that is July 25th, and we want to just be throughout New York City uh, doing testing, uh, public relations kind of thing, use of social media, just to make sure we get the message out there. Now, we've covered hepatitis C, and we have a few minutes, and I'm going to give you a chance to just talk about Medicare, the good work that you do. Let our viewers know all about the good work that you're doing in uh, at Medicaid, I'm, a, uh, I'm very much aware of it and I am just so pleased to, to be able to partner not only with Hepatitis C but other outreach in communities in order to make sure that uh, information is made available and access to care, as Ellie said, shouldn't be a problem 
but a lot of people still don't know that. So just talk a little about Amedicare. This is your time. <laughs> Showcase, Amedicare. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the, the key thing that I think uh, sets Amedicare apart from many other insurance companies, um, I mean, as a special needs plan, we really provide, we go the extra step for our members, and we, you know, like hepatitis C, like Danielle was talking about, was we really provide those services that really, we don't just uh, pay for the pill, we make sure that you have the right pill, and that you have the s services you need to make sure you're going to take the pill, that you take it on a regular schedule. Now, we also follow up to make sure that you, um, you know, you get your blood tested again after you've received treatment to make sure you've been cured. So most insurance companies are just going to dispense or just, you know, approve for payment those medications without all those other services to make sure that that treatment is successful. So I think that's what Amedicare does, not only for hepatitis C, but we do the same for HIV. We, you know, really uh, support our membership that are transgender, uh, both positive and negative transgender and homeless members. So I think, you know, those are the key areas and we not only provide, you know, um, pay for the medical services, but also give you access to or connect you with those services you need to really have a, a, a full experience. So it's the medication plus all the supportive services that people have, transportation, Correct. child care, and everything that makes life just a little bit more manageable. And how long have you been with Amedicare, Ellie? Um, almost three years. Four years for me. Three years. Oh, okay, so <laughs> you all are the newbies. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but still carrying on the good work. Yes. Well, yes. I certainly do thank you for uh, spending time with us, talking about uh, what it is that you do. But there's one last question that I did want to raise, and that's the regimen in terms of the medication and the treatment. I know you said it's eight weeks. Could you just talk a little bit about the medication regimen that is being prescribed to treat hep C? So minimum eight weeks. Um, sometimes treatment can go up to 12 weeks or 16 weeks depending on the patient's history of treatment, how they've been treated, with what drug they were treated in the past, um, amount of liver damage. Um, but at minimum, treatment is eight weeks. Um, our preferred regimen is three tablets, once a day for eight weeks. Um, and then again, when we review a case, we look at the patient's history to see which uh, drug is the most support appropriate, what type of hepatitis C are we treating. Again, there's six different genotypes, so these are um, these things, we look at that. Um, what other medications is the patient on? Uh, we have a large HIV population, so are there any drug interactions that we need to look at? Um, and then again, the amount of liver, liver damage. So if a person tests positive, say for hep C, what is the next step they should take? They're not a person who's living with HIV, and now they tested positive for hep C, and they may be learning about this by watching this show. We don't know. <laughs> uh, what's the next step that they should take? So have a conversation with your provider. And, um, that's, that's the next step, a conversation with the provider. The physician will determine what drug is the best drug for that patient. Um, the physician will then contact the insurance company and get what's called a prior authorization. Um, once the prior authorization is approved, then the patient can go to the pharmacy and get their medication just like they do any other medication. That's very good advice. So we hope that th this will help increase uh, interest in terms of people getting tested and knowing that there are resources mm -hmm. and that they can get the help and Amedicare is one of the places where they can come to get help. Yes, you can always call us. We can connect you with a hepatitis C uh, testing center, something like that if you have an interest, whether you're a Medicare member or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can help you connect you. There's lots of free hepatitis C testing centers around the city. So they're all available for anybody who, who look, looks on the web. Okay. So. Well, this is our very good information and I certainly want to thank you for uh, taking the time to come and share this and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to discuss even in the future much more about the good work that Amedicare is doing. And I want to remind our viewers that Wednesday, July 25th is the sixth annual National African American Hepatitis C Action Day. And this day provides, as we said earlier, an opportunity to promote hepatitis C prevention, testing, and treatment messages to public health partners 
and clearly the black community. It also provides a chance to discuss the importance of linkage to care and integrating prevention opportunities as many people at risk for acquiring hepatitis C are often at risk for acquiring other infectious diseases such as HIV or in fact living with HIV as it has been discussed today. So this is information that we like to share so that if you don't know that if you're in a situation or if you have ever been engaged in situations that might have um, put you possibly for hepatitis C, get tested. Get tested because again, there is a cure, it is tolerable, and it is affordable. So I'd like to thank the Amita Care team for joining us today. And for more information, visit or call 1-855-GO-AMITA. Learn more about Inblaca, visit our website, nblca.org. Also look for Inblaca on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. The Manhattan Neighborhood Network brings these programs to you to better inform you, the viewer about the important topics that impact your health and well-being. So please let your family, friends, and neighbors know about this programming. I am C. Virginia Fields, and thank you for joining us, and hope you'll tune in next time for In Blackers Health Action TV here on Manhattan Neighborhood Network.